Hello and welcome to the 12th episode of the On Ice Perspectives show. Today is Friday, June 5th, 2020, and joining us today to share his birthday is none other than Jeremy Abbott. Jeremy, welcome and happy birthday. Hey, hey everyone, how's it going? Hey Jordan, uh, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, it's such a such a pleasure to be here today with you on this day. <laughs> yes, and a pleasure to be with you too, as well as all of our viewers. Um, I encourage you guys to let us know what countries you're watching us from. Um, I'd love to see just how much we reach in the world. So Jeremy, your bio on Instagram says you're a 2014 Team USA Olympic bronze medalist, two-time Olympian, four-time U.S. champion. You are more than your titles, but you've never been able to give a short quote. <laughs> that is very accurate. I cannot give a short quote to save my life. Um, well, so what we decided to do instead is we're going to let your skating speak for itself. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jeremy, I've... <laughs> Luckily, had you to film um, since the very beginning of my filmmaking career and also as a role model skating at Detroit Skating Club, uh, which mm. we go way back. So I wanted to share all of the footage that I've been able to capture of you since I started On Ice Perspectives. Um, what do you think? I'm excited to see what we have. <laughs> like, I don't even remember some of it. Yeah, I'm going through all of this. Um it was really cool to see just how much uh, you've grown in just the last two years, honestly, since I saw you uh, during the Olympics in 2018 in New York. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. where we're going to start our story. Um, let's. I also up. can't believe that, like, with everything that you've done and and the mass following that you've that you've grown, it's only been like around two years. Yeah. Like you've done so much in such a short period of time. Thank you. Well, well, we'll get to see just how much we've both done in the last two years. Uh, <laughs> um, I also want to say uh, a few people are wishing you happy birthday from uh, Kazuki, thanks, guys. me, Chris, Christiane, KN Guy. Um, they're watching from Japan, Switzerland, and uh, happy birthday from Ken, Elizabethtown, Pennsylvania. Uh, well, thank you guys so much, and thank you for being here with us today and just taking in a little bit of skating. Absolutely. And be sure if you're still tuning in to us live, let us know where you're coming from. Um, with that said, let's start our journey in one of your favorite, both of our favorite cities, New York City, Chelsea Piers. So we're going to go there. This was filmed uh, pretty much two years ago during the Olympics. And if we could actually only go back there for real, that'd be great. Yeah, I know it's... Don't know whether they're open or closed right now, but or if they're even keeping their ice cold. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so you're looking at kind of a montage that I was working on with Jeremy. I had bought my camera probably a week before this, and Jeremy walks in just completely randomly at Chelsea Piers, and I ask him if I can film him warming up and getting his skates on, getting on the ice, there was a song to this, but um, I had to take it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got a notification saying like, oh, your video, the, uh, the, the music's copyrighted from your video. So we had to mute it. And I was like, what video? And I clicked and it was this one. I was like, wait, I didn't even post this. Why are they notifying me? <laughs> I thought that was really funny. Um, yeah, this was really like, it was very fortuitous. We didn't really plan it. I just, I was there um, visiting and... I went into skate and you were there and we just kind of started chatting. You were like, hey, would you mind if I filmed? And I was like, that'd be amazing. I'd love to have some footage and like, you know, see what we do. And this like was all just very random and it was such a fun day. Uh, and you're this one, you're actually starting to give me ideas. And this was so new to me. You're like, can you what if uh, you filmed me coming at you? And I was like, <laughs> sure. I'm camera blocking you and neither of us know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> now watch this. This is my favorite. That was really close. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. I love it. Um, oh, we have a happy birthday from Brazil from Nalu Walker. Oh my gosh. And Thank you. And Katri Gilbert says happy birthday from Nashville, Tennessee. Hey, Nashville. 
Oh, and this is, I brought my GoPros the next day, and it was all about... Yeah. <laughs> I'm, um, I'm no, I'm no a large ball day flipping over humans, but I'll flip over a GoPro. Yeah, I was a little bit, I was only a little bit nervous for my GoPro. <laughs> <laughs> but now we've got... I was uh, more, like, more nervous than, like, landing on it. I was more nervous about, like, picking on it. <laughs> This was, that was cool. gave me one of my first ideas for a video was just a montage of Jeremy doing a backflip in slow motion. <laughs> the right. chest shots were really cool, actually. Like, you don't get the full scope of it, but it's kind of cool to like see the ceiling and then the ice and. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to figure out like what is it because I can't do a backflip on the ice. What does it feel like to? do a backflip jeremy in, in your quotable words <laughs> um it's like it's exhilarating at first and then it just like anything else it becomes like very commonplace um but it's funny because like now i actually have less fear and anxiety to do a backflip than i do to jump in shows um like i would i would take a backflip over a jump any day it's like a nice place filler <laughs> <laughs> I guess you you have permission to land on two feet when you do a backflip. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's just like it gets so much more crowd reaction. Like it's funny because it's 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 fairly. I mean, it's easy, um, but it's easier than like triples, um, to be honest. And so like when you do, you know, I've done a triple axel in a show and gotten like like decent applause and then done a backflip and like people go crazy i'm like well one was way harder than the other so like i'd rather just do the backflip because it's my like it's more appreciated and i'm having fallen on it like like i have on triple axles i think with uh that was a really cool shot like the full 360 mm -hmm. I'm going to ask you to do it a few more times and now we're just going to go through like we did it probably eight <laughs> ten more times <laughs> Movie magic, y'all. This is how it happens. Take 500. Oh, we have a happy birthday from China. Oh, thank you. Hi, China. China. Um, Mike says, I love Jeremy's leg movement. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you guys are so sweet. And then you start doing something so many times that you can't do it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was it. And then maybe, oh yeah. And this is the other uh, penalty of doing it so many times. <laughs> Just chipping away at the ice. <laughs> that uh, ice at Chelsea sorry, Piers Chelsea is Piers. very, yeah. It's very <laughs> gentle. You have to be gentle with it. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, it's hard ice, it's hard. It chips away easy. <laughs> so one of the things... Oh, we I really on, don't remember doing half of this stuff with you. I didn't either until I watched it, but we filmed for three days. Like, I came and saw you uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and it wasn't... It was Tuesday that I, like, randomly ran into you at Chelsea Piers. That's so... Well... Back in the days. It was really fun, like, trying to improvise to the way your... I mean, your own perspective has to be changing when you do so many head rolls and... Oh, yeah. Like, I, I do find, um, with programs like this especially, like, where there's a lot of, like off off center and off axis and especially like rotating while being like off off center um like i i find it hard to focus my eyes to like adjust because you know we don't spot like dancers do um and so it's like i'll look up and i'll see the ceiling and then i have no idea when the ice is coming back down and it's just like you kind of have to rely on that like that repetition and on like that that core strength and that balance that you just um, acquire after <laughs> so many, so many years. But, um, 
yeah it's definitely weird at first because like you have to find that that balance point and that tipping point it's like you have to push it to the point of like falling because that's where you find like where that that range is but then you have to like pull it back so that you don't you know you don't fall but um that one like those two programs that i did with um benoit the in the shirt and um land of all like really uh <laughs> my head steaming you were like wait i want to get a shot of this you're you're like you're so warm in this cold rink like you're steaming um but yeah these these were definitely challenging um very physical like even though there wasn't a lot of like uh technical content in it, it these programs were like very 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 physical and very exhausting because it just was constant engagement like there was not a moment that i could let down because i was rarely rarely over center rarely over my axis i think that's... and when i was i was in like big stretch positions like that and uh yeah what's so special about skating especially this kind of choreography is it really plays with where your vertical is because of the physics of skating like you can mm -hmm. be at a tilt an angle like this but it can feel like you're standing straight up yeah um nalu and then there are moments like uh where you um where you feel like you're like completely horizontal and you see footage and you're kind of like more vertical <laughs> but like you really thought that you were giving it everything and you're like yeah. oh yeah i was like in it i was like fully like horizontal like, you see a video and you're like wow shh yeah, that was not uh, that was not remotely what I was going for. <laughs> it's tough. I think when you're li when an audience is there live, though, they get it. They know what you're feeling. It just doesn't always come through in in photographs or even videos that are taken from off the ice. Um, have you had anyone that you've interviewed so far like have trouble watching themselves? Like they just hate watching themselves? Yeah, I think that's everybody. <laughs> Especially, I mean, uh, to be fair, like, this is, I'm watching this too, and I'm like, oh, my, my footage was so bad then. <laughs> it's funny, though, like, I mean, I must be a narcissist because <laughs> I kind of love watching myself. Like, oh. even, um, you know, I'm never happy with it, but I can see, like, where there's room for improvement, and I can, I can see the stuff that I did, that I did, that I do like, and I don't know, I, I just, I find it. I, I learn a lot from watching myself. I kind of enjoy it. Nice. Yeah, I, I see that. I mean, it, being able to um, recognize your flaws, but also recognize what you're doing right and how to make more of that happen and less of the other thing happen. Yeah, I feel like my, um, a lot of times, like kind of talking about like being horizontal versus vertical, like, um, I, I like watching because sometimes I feel like my body, my body lies to me or like my physicality, it, like it, it, the, the feeling I get is different from the reality. Um, so I like seeing it to see like if I'm overdoing it or underdoing it and, and, and kind of getting a better like grasp on, on myself and on what I'm, I'm trying to accomplish. Mm -hmm. And that said though, sometimes the camera lies. Ah, oh, true, true. Angles are a thing. <laughs> Um, so we have more happy birthday from Japan. In fact, uh, Minori's here. Oh, hi, Minori. <coughs> and Deidre said she's, uh, she's on here briefly to torture herself because she has a board meeting to go to, but she'll be back to watch the video later. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I believe it's saved. You can come back anytime. Yeah. Don't miss your board meeting. Very important. This will be here. <laughs> um, this, by the way. Oh, you're just missing me shimmying. <laughs> This is uh, footage from, we fast forwarded, still New York City. All right, beautiful views over the, the bay. So I think that's what it is. Um, but this is now at Christmas time um, during Melissa and Dennis's uh, show at Brookfield. Mm -hmm. We're looking uh, at the, is that the Hudson, right? Yes. It's like, it's over to Jersey. Yeah, that's Jersey. Yeah. Yeah. Um, technically, the Statue of Liberty is viewable from that little corner of the rink you were just in. Oh yeah. But it is like looking cool from there. Yeah. But if you yeah, it's, you can it's see, fun it was, to perform out there. And it was raining like on and off. Um. 
yeah, I remember sitting in like the warming hut and it was like, is the show going to happen? And they're like, well, we don't know. The the rain kind of knocked out the lighting or the, the sound. And um, but they figured it all out like la- very last minute. Like we were sitting there like, is it going to happen? Is it going to happen? And they're like, we hope so, but we don't know. The rain kind of let up and they were like, all right, we're going. And then we just went out and did it and got a little wet and it was a lot of fun, actually. <laughs> Yeah, it was. It all it all comes together at the last minute. Somehow it always does. Like, yeah. <laughs> I think it's when you have like skaters who can skate in any condition. <laughs> um, we have a uh, happy birthday from Cologne. Oh, Germany. shout out to Caitlin Osman. Hey, Coco. Yeah. Oh, hey, Cologne. What's up, Germany? Um, Jerry, will know we haven't showed the Jack Garrett performance already. <laughs> they want to know. <laughs> All right, so now we're going. This isn't New York City, but it is New York, Westchester, for Tara Modlin's Ice Dreams tour. And oh. This is some. We had. Um, I was like feeling myself that day, and I hadn't done triple axles in a while, and I was like, Jordan, take some footage, take some footage. And I think you filmed me pop for a good like 15 or 20 minutes before I finally rotated one um we asked Alyssa Liu to judge to judge my triple axles and I think I only managed to do one and after standing there for like 15 minutes she's like um that was good (laughs) and I was like poor thing I'm sorry I thought this was gonna go much quicker yeah I have I have that footage sort of but the sound was really bad so i'm gonna subtitle it i didn't have time to do it for this one but no that's a, okay there's a fun little it... <laughs> <laughs> see mm-hmm. she was she was sick of my uh She's a my shenanigans sergeant. she is <laughs> She was like, I'm, I'm done with your shenanigans. It's time for you to, to leave. <laughs> <laughs> better do better. Good motto. So this is, this isn't a number you did in the show, but you were warming up a bit of choreography. And I was wondering if you remember what this was for. Um, yes, I, um, I was working on a program that I had done for Japan Open, um, but I ended up scrapping this one. Um, this was like the first program that I started working on, um, and it didn't end up working, so I ended up scrapping it, but as you can see, I had some choreography (laughs) um and i think i was like i I was kind of mixing between like stuff i had choreographed and stuff i was just improving um so i think a a a big amount of this footage is 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 improv um but i was just trying to like get some stuff together to finish the program like just get some ideas i was just moving around to kind of create some ideas and um I remember actually really loving what I was doing this day and I didn't, I don't think I realized that you were filming because like when I went back, I obviously couldn't remember any of it. And then I was like, (laughs) Oh, well that's lost to the, that's lost to the wind. Um, but no, it exists here. Uh, You guys have a firsthand account of a program I never skated. I think that's something I've always found with you, Jeremy, is that every time I see you, it always feels like you, you're playing with choreography, remixing, all the actions and movements that you have done in the past and I'm sure you've scrapped dozens and dozens of programs like this and it's (laughs) this is the program that you did in the show (laughs) yeah but it feels like with all of the shows that you ended up doing you know after this and through the next year you know it always felt like you had choreography up your sleeve which I think was a result of how much you're constantly going through those actions. Yeah. um, This was like, this was 
interesting because kind of from the time that we started doing this stuff, um, or like from the time you started on Ice Perspectives and you and I started working together in this capacity, um, I was doing a lot of shows, but like was kind of like in a weird place with just like skating. Like I was kind of struggling with like some equipment stuff. And then I was just struggling like with kind of transitioning, um, transitioning uh, officially out of competition and onto the next phase of my career. And, um, you know, that just like, a, um, there was a bit of a, I don't know what to say. Um, it's hard to say while we're watching this routine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah well. And then you know, like the music is like going, no, um, just like a bit of, um, <sighs> what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> you're, you're not, you're not going to find it. Um, just kind of uncertainty, like with what I wanted to do, what the next steps were, how I wanted to proceed. And like, um, you know, I wasn't feeling very um, m motivated or necessarily excited about skating. Like, I, I was always excited to perform. Like, every show that I had, I was super excited. But it was all the in-between stuff. Like, I, w I wasn't loving practicing. I wasn't loving skating. Um, and I just kind of had no ideas. So, like, these, the, these two years, I was pulling out a lot of old programs, a lot of old choreography, just because I was not, I was very uninspired um, with my own skating and, and my own, and where I was like um, in my life at that time. Um, so I just, I think it was funny, like just bouncing off of your comment, you were like, oh, you're always working on something. And I was like, yes, but nothing was really kind of like hitting at this time. Nothing was feeling right. I wasn't like, I wasn't really, uh, really convinced of, of myself and of what I was doing. But um, I'm glad that I had programs like this to to fall back on to rely on because they're so much fun and and i always love skating them and performing them so i do feel lucky that i have a good um catalog of of numbers to to, to pull out of a hat at any given time But I think it's funny, you know, like um, since we've all been in uh, kind of quarantine and, and everything that's going on right now, um, you know, when I do talks with kids and stuff, I, I kind of always have told them, you know, um, a big turning point in my career was a time when um, I fractured my back and I, I wasn't allowed to skate for three months. Um, well, technically, I wasn't allowed to skate for a month, but then for two months, I couldn't jump or spin or really do anything um, except for stroking and then edges and footwork and um, but like at that moment when skating was taken away from me was like the point that I really realized like how much it meant to me and um, that was when I started to kind of work harder and and I feel like even in this moment like with with um, everything that's going on with the pandemic and and having to stay home and ice rinks being closed and not being able to skate like um, it was, it kind of, it's been a forced break and I've never taken this much time away from the ice. And it's just like, I don't know, it's kind of reinvigorated. I'm really excited to get back out and, and to start like working on movement again and, and working on new things and creating programs. And um, it just like, it's just been like a nice personal, like internal reset, um, if that makes sense. I don't know how, like how it's felt for you. Like, you know, you can't be out in the ring taking foot. Have you been mm -hmm. just like, constantly going in your head about like what's next and what you want to do and how you can create better like have you just kind of been going through it um yeah i i never i didn't really think of it quite like that simply because to me filming is the performing part it's the part that i mm -hmm. love to do the editing is the hard part for uh, me because it, you have to well just... then has this freed up a lot of time for you to do a lot of editing yes but it's not what i want to do <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's like great okay well now i have to that, that's why the the idea for this show like finally took hold i'd had it for a long time but to me going through footage and having to like select the good from the bad um is really tough because to me everything looks great and i hate having to cut out things that <laughs> yeah that, that makes sense to me. 
Um, <laughs> but having a show like this where I can just share it all with an audience and you guys, it feels, I get, you know, I get that feeling again of performing. Because um, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, it's like we're on the ice right now, right? Like we're watching footage, but our souls are still live, you know, right here on yeah. the soul screens. <laughs> Yeah, well, and that's the thing, like, um, about performance. It's, like, it's uh, a moment of escape from kind of reality, and, like, that's why people really enjoy going to see live events and seeing art and, and, and kind of taking all this in because it it gets you to conceptualize life in a different way, but it also is a form of escapism at the same time. So, uh, you know, having having this footage, it allows people to kind of relive those emotions that they went through when they first saw it. And it's cool even as a performer to kind of relive those emotions, um, to get to relive them kind of over and over again, you know? It misses a little bit of the, the electricity that comes with the energy from an audience, but like you still, you still have that feeling of what it felt like. Yeah, I mean, speaking of electricity from an audience, it's unsure when skating will get to have a fully packed arena, um, you know, for the next couple, for the next year at least. Yeah, I, I think, I don't know, I, I, I think it's unfortunate, I think it's, it's, you know, good in some ways, I think it's unfortunate in some ways, um, but I'm excited to see how, how we can innovate it and, and create a new, a new form of, um, of show a new form of entertainment through figure skating and maybe through through media and through through new through new ways um you know how how can we as a community you know change the face of it how what can we do how can we open it up and 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 innovate because i feel like um the powers that be are, are you know there's constant change but I just feel like there's a lack of innovation. You know, there's there's lots of change going on in the sport and in the competitive side, but when you look at it, like there hasn't been a lot of innovation in in terms of the entertainment, in terms of um, the um, show aspect of it. Uh, so, like, what can we do? How can we push it forward? How can we bring it into the future? How can we bring figure skating to a wider audience? And um, I mean, that's one amazing thing about what you do is that you, 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 you've done that and, and you really studied how to do that and, and you're doing such an amazing job with it. Um, so now let's, <laughs> let's take it further. Let's, what's our next idea, Jordan? Let's, let's, yeah. let's get on the phone and discuss. I mean, I think everything I've ever done has always felt like a proof of concept without like the real purpose behind it. But from, it was all about finding happy accidents like this, like you staying, this was at stars on ice rehearsals, by the way, you staying, at the end of an extremely long rehearsal day to do your programs, just you, everyone else had left and gone home and you just stayed and did your routines. And I was there, I stayed and filmed it and it ended up being some of the most, uh, I don't know, you and in this empty arena with normal lights, <laughs> it was better than when I filmed tech rehearsals. Like this, this is my favorite clip I've possibly filmed all of last year and I guess this year too was just you running through this routine with no audience but you and your and the way that you're performing it is so personal so I hope this is a format that can be pushed further because we could do this now if we had just an ice rink and someone to manage the lights yeah well and that's what I was like you know, can we do a digital skating show where we have a cast and put it together and have you film it and then put it out to a platform like YouTube Live or, you know, can can we do that? How can we do that? Um, We're doing it now. Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. But live, but, yes. I mean, like an organized show, like where, you know, we can't have an audience, but we're performing for an audience live still, even though they're not necessarily in the space. Mm-hmm. And can we do that but maintain the energy and emotion of a show? Because there is something like very, very special about watching figure skating live. And I, I, I try to like express this as much as I can to people when I talk to them that there's just 
I mean, having you on the ice makes a huge difference. You kind of get a sense for speed and space and dynamic quality, and um, you, you get you get a, a much um, closer look at that and, and um, kind of understand it from footage. But like when you watch on TV um, from the stationary cameras, like you really don't get the sense of athleticism, of power, of height, of speed. Um, you know, the biggest thing when I talk to people who have come to a show for the first time, they're like, you know, we sat, I, I was dragged by my wife or my girlfriend or my friend or blah, blah, blah. And, um, you know, we sat, we sat front row and it was amazing. You guys were so fast and we could feel the wind when you skated by and we could hear your edges. And I didn't realize how big you guys jumped and how fast you skated. And it was amazing. And I'm like, I know. Like, yeah. It's it's such a great sport and it's such an amazing sport, but like sometimes TV just doesn't do it justice and you have to watch it live. I 100% agree. I mean, even I don't think that what I film quite captures what it's like to be there because when a skater jumps, especially a toe jump or a landing, you feel it in your seat. You feel it in the Oop, air. That's the ice. <laughs> <laughs> you feel the skater almost run off the ice <laughs> into your face. <laughs> You know, in some shows, they have felt me run off of the ice <laughs> into their feet. Um, I have fallen off of that ice like more times than I can count. Ooh, yeah. Wow, that was... Uh, we'll chalk it up to the end of a long day and being the last one in the arena at like 10 p.m. Well, you, and you know, you get into it and then you realize that this is a slightly smaller rink because they put the on, the on ice seating there. Yeah, I mean, my spread eagle is like nothing to write home about to begin with, but that was that was rough. <laughs> but we actually there's there is a project that we still need to do. We talked about the very very first time that we talked about you doing on ice perspectives i was like i have something that i want to film and i want you to come and i want it to be simple lighting but i want it to be like a story and i want to camera block it and like um we had talked about all of that like two years ago oh and my gosh i still want to do that i'm st well we still can <coughs> now more than ever i feel like the the powers that be are must be like a lot more open-minded now about digital projects for figure skating because they've always had the live shows to rely on live audiences and such but yeah. now well, it's so important if, and if after all are, of those we'll run throughs just, you... we'll just have to do it ourselves <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's i've always kind of felt like no you know it's great to imagine all the things that people can let you do but the best thing yeah. to do is just to to try to do let's, it let's create that space for ourselves baby mm -hmm. um my headphones are going to die. Give me just a second. I'm sorry. Sure. I'm going to read. I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Uh, can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? I can still hear you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That like I was just worried about sound quality. <laughs> <laughs> um, give them a charge because we want to have the... We don't want to have any Yeah, feedback. They're, they're charging. Uh, Nalu says the first figure skating competition shooter is... There we go. The first figure skating competition I ever watched in person was 2015 U.S. Nationals. I was so glad I got the opportunity to meet and briefly talk to you there. Oh, that was the first person. Uh, that was the first competition you watched in person. That's so cool. I mean, not not my like best example of my skating, but um, <laughs> actually, that was a really special nationals for a lot of reasons. It was emotional and um, you know sad. My dad had just passed, um, and it ended up being my last champion, my last U S nationals. And it was kind of a comeback after I had already said that I was going to be done competing. And there was a lot, there's a lot going on at that one. Not, not an easy one for sure. Um, but actually, um, one of my favorite performances that I've ever given was at that championship. So I was really lucky. Uh, U S figure skating was working with, um, the North Carolina, um, school for the arts. Um, and they had the saxophone ensemble there and they asked uh, if I would skate before the championships, like before nationals happened, they asked if I would skate uh, live to a piece of music from the, the sax ensemble. And 
Um, you know, we picked the music, and this was kind of all before everything happened with my dad, and then he passed, and um, I decided to like dedicate that piece to him. And you know, we kind of we created it about like the uh, five stages of grief, um, and I don't know, getting to perform that piece with the live music um, at the championships, like in honor of my dad. It, that was one of the most special moments of my competitive career. And I'm really grateful, like, even though that wasn't a great championship for me, I'm really grateful that I got to have that moment and I got to ha um, kind of express myself in that way and create that story and, and express my, my sadness and my grief. Um, Cause I'm not, I, I, as I said, I'm, I can't give a short quote. I, I talk a lot but I'm not always good at expressing myself necessarily. And so that's where I rely on my skating. Like when I, when I don't have the words to say what I want to say, my skating's always done it for me. And so I'm really grateful that I, I got to, I got to do that. I got to say goodbye. I got to show my, my anger and my sadness and, 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 and my grief, um, the, the, the way that I knew how, uh, how best to. So, Anyway, moral of the story is that wasn't a great championship, but I'm grateful that I got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the the footage that we get with the lights, and I wish that like I had the presence of mind at the time um, to realize like how special that is, and 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 actually give you like a full performance um you know like with the jumps with the full emotion but it's like you know it's the tech rehearsal of the day of the show and you're yeah. trying to conserve energy because you have the, the opening night and you want to make sure that you're you're ready and you're prepared for the show to give the best performance in the show but then it's like i look at this i look at this footage and it's so beautiful and it's so special i'm like damn i really wish that i had <laughs> given a hundred percent for this footage because it's just it's so cool I and mean, it's so special to see with the lights on the ice because that's such a rare like viewpoint and, it's yours it's it's the um, viewpoint no one else really gets to see exactly so when we get to do a live show again i will make sure that i i go full out for you <laughs> i mean the priority was the show it was in a few hours yeah i mean the priority is always going to be the show <laughs> <Yeah>. but <laughs> unless I unless we could ever to have the full footage with lighting and everything else you know there's I look at like what this pandemic has meant for figure skating and for what I do but I always try to focus on the bright side and the bright side is you know maybe there is a possibility that someday I could get a budget big enough to do just this right empty arena don't even you know we can give seats away for free <laughs> but make it about the filming but still have the lights and production value of this and get um, higher skaters to perform for it it's that's been the long-term dream of mine that would be amazing i'm like i'm on board with that you know if you like well and that's what i'm talking about like ways to innovate it like can we is it possible to sell to a streaming platform mm -hmm. and then that way like you know you can give away tickets or sell them for super 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 cheap or um but that way like you know you kind of have you can broadcast the show and you can do it this way um, and you can make it like a, a very cool digital event um, paid for that way. But then you can have an audience and you can have people in there for, for much cheaper, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm also not a producer and I <laughs> don't know anything about money. So like, yeah, I didn't, this go to is why I have it. <laughs> this is why I haven't tried to do anything <laughs> prior because I'm very, very clueless. So if any of y'all out there want to teach me about money and raising money and, and getting money for <laughs> entertainment, which let's be honest, like now our, our time and our money needs to go to other places and other things. But like looking ahead a couple years, like mm -hmm. get at me. <laughs> Oh, and a quick shout out to Meryl Davis. You are so beautiful to me. <laughs> We've had a few people, like, every time you two pop up, it's like, Jermer, Jermer. Jermer, Jermer for life. 
Oh, I actually I want to give a shout out to Michelle Dolly who choreographed this number. No way. That's um, awesome. I'm sure all of you, if you don't know, um, Skate Global, uh, Michelle Dolly is Elage Balde's uh, fiance, and she's an amazing dancer. And um, I worked with her in Elage uh, to create this program last year um, in LA, and it was such a fun experience. And um, you know, they've been doing these dance classes every Wednesday since we've been in quarantine. It's been so much fun. And I just wanted to give them a shout out because I loved this program. I, I sat on this piece of music. I sat on this piece of music for four years. Um, the first time I heard it, I knew it was so special and I, I fell in love with it. And I just like, I kind of put it aside because I didn't know what I wanted to do with it or how I wanted to use it or in what way I wanted to create with it. But I knew it was a piece I had to use. And so I contacted Michelle and I was like, I have this piece of music. And I would love to work with you and create something really cool. And um, she was super, super excited about it. But I love I love working with um, dancers for choreography because they just bring a different perspective um, than skating choreographers. You know, you, you can see there's there's a difference. Sometimes it can get a little clunky when you can't like because you have to translate. It's it's like translating between lang languages um, because our language is, is quite different than, you know, dance, like uh, dance language. Um, and so kind of creating that translation, it's not always a perfect translation and it, it can, it can become like uh, some of the Google translates you see <laughs> between languages. But um, <laughs> when it works and it comes together, it just, it's, it's really special and it creates something very nuanced and very different. And I, I just like, you can always see a different quality and, um, that's not to say like better or worse, uh, don't get me wrong. Like uh, I see, I see some figure skating choreography that just blows my mind. And I'm like, wow, you are genius and you are brilliant. Um, and I actually see a lot. Like I, I love, um, so many people's work in skating. Um, but yeah, I personally, I love working with dancers cause it, it gives me a different challenge. It gives me a, a new uh, you know, a new style, a new way of moving, a new, a new challenge, something to translate, something to work towards. And, um, I, I don't know. I enjoy it. I enjoy that, that challenge. It is a challenge and it's so cool to see. I've, you're right. I've seen you work with so many dancers, even when you're visiting New York, you always hook up with the dance community and it takes a special amount of skill and what you're saying where sometimes the dancing can be really clunky when translated to the ice and that's your that's your job that's what you do as a skater so this is near the end of all the footage that we have to share for today this is the same day we filmed everything else but um oh, the, but uh, practice <laughs> yeah doing it again oh yeah y'all i don't know if you i mean some of you know this because you've been to stars on ice and uh, come to like the pre-show and but like you guys know when you come to the pre-show you're there for like four hour three hours before the show and then you have a two-hour show so it's like already a long day but then like we do we do rehearsal of the group numbers f first like the, the day of the first show we do group like group rehearsal first then we do uh, full dress rehearsal of the show and then we do these warm-ups with the pre-show and everything and then we do the show and then we do the meet and greet <laughs> Um, yeah, first day of the show is like usually like a it's like a good 13 14 hour day. It's a, it's a long one. But it's a fun one for sure. There's nothing like going out for that first show and like having that nervous energy, that excitement to finally put it out in the world, but like that that nerves like what if I forget the choreography and run into something someone and like mess up the whole show there's always that bit of fear like what what if i forget a step and like just ruin everything <laughs> but i think that's the excitement of it too because you're like ooh, well let's see what's gonna happen This is a pretty good run through. Yeah, it's Until. so cool to see that move like in its final form. <laughs> From uh, is that a would you call it a hydroblade that you do with your the backward? The 
the like stopping thing on the toe picks. But what you did right before it, where you had your arms over your head and then your hands over. Oh, uh, I don't know. I've never put a word to it. Like, uh, Michelle was like, I just want this like big, long edge movement. And I was like, great. How about this? And she was like, perfect. perfect. <laughs> and she was like, but I want you to use your hands like you're taking your shirt off. And then I want you to drop the shirt on the ground. And I was like. I, I got you. Like, I uh, I see where you're going with this. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> Ooh, the fa- uh, spinning and jumping faces. Man, oh man. Yeah. They're and let me tell you, I've got good spinning and jumping face. <laughs> we know. <laughs> yep. I. <laughs> I become famous every four years. It's like right around the Olympics, those figure skating memes love to pop back up, and there's me. <laughs> I'm like, hey, y'all, forgot about me. I'm back. <sighs> well, that is that is the footage that we have to share. Um, <laughs> <coughs> I want to go briefly go through some of the questions that we might have left um, on the ground. So I'm going to scroll all the way up. And No, oh, sorry, I was talking too much. Oh, no, it's fine. Um, I always tell people we'll be answering questions at the end of the show, so now it's the end of the show. Um, when This was back when we were watching your backflip. Kazuki um, and Kan Guy both are like, backflip's so cool. Was learning the backflip hard? Um, <clears throat> no. Well, no. <laughs> um, I, I did gymnastics when I was younger, um, and so like I could do I could do a standing backflip on the floor um, long before I ever tried it on the ice. Um, and when you add that momentum, it's actually a lot like the the backward momentum uh, with the glide on the ice. It's actually a lot easier. You just like kind of put your toe pick into vault and then you have a little extra spring and height. And since the momentum's already moving that way, like the feet just kind of go and it, it's it's not it's not difficult. Um, the, the biggest thing was for me was the fear. Um, because obviously like I'm not, I'm not on grass. I'm not on like a soft spongy surface. I'm on the ice. And if something, if something God forbid goes wrong, then, you know, it's like not a small matter. (laughs) Um, so like I learned first in a harness. Um, so I had basically what, um, I have to give, um, a shout out to Ashley Clark. Ashley Clark is a, a skater, a show skater who taught me backflip. Um, and any of you who have been to Sun Valley or any of like um, other shows, she also does um, like fire juggling, like poi, and she she lights the ice on fire. She does all these crazy things, um, but she taught me my backflip. Um, so basically, I had like a leather weight belt attached to my waist, and then two ropes tied to the belt, and I had um ashley on one side and brent Bumentry on the other side and um i had a helmet and you know we did that until i got comfortable and then they took one rope off and then um i kind of had the second rope on just for comfort because nobody's going to be able to hold you up from one rope but um especially attached at your hip um and then after that no ropes and then after that no helmet and then um yeah so like all said and done it took me like two hours um with to like go from harness to to completely by myself um and it was fine uh but i learned so the way that our schedules kind of worked out like between getting choreography i learned it in 2016 for star for stars and actually for peanut butter jelly which was the program that i did um in uh in uh, westchester well yes in westchester um so I learned it. I learned a backflip specifically for that program. Uh, so Benji Schwimmer choreographed that program, and I was like, I want to do disco, and I have this piece of um, like of uh, contemporary electronic music that I want to use because it has like this definite disco beat and this vibe. And he was like, great. So we made this really campy, fun, ridiculous program. And at the end, there's that kind of crescendo, and we're like, we need something here to really give it a punch. And I was like, for the longest time, I didn't want to learn a backflip because I felt like it was such a like not, I, I I felt like I I wanted my ego <laughs> wanted my skating to like to speak for itself and to not have any gimmicks or tricks and I wanted to be a simple purist and I wanted everyone to just love me for for my skating and and the beauty of it, um, but I don't know there was something about just 
in that moment, I was like, I have to do a backflip for this number. Like this number w is amazing, but it's only going to be like good. But if I can like, if I can get a backflip and do it like in this program, it'll be like the exc exclamation point mm -hmm. to like, to, to punctuate this perfectly. And it, it will go from people like applauding to like people like getting really excited. Um, so I, I contacted Ashley and she was like, yeah, sure. Amazing. Uh, but our schedules didn't align. So I didn't get like, I learned it. I think the day before I had to go for, to rehearsals for, for stars. Um, so I learned it and then I left and I was off by myself and we did four days of rehearsals and then we had the first show and, you know, we have really, really long, long days of rehearsals. And so I didn't practice it. And then the day of the show I was on warm up. And I, it was the first time that I was going to practice it. And I was so scared that I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Um, I spent the entire practice just like circling, 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 circling. And I couldn't get myself to do it. Um, but the way that the, the show was set up that year is that we had two shows. And then we had two weeks off. Um, because there was um, that competition, that international competition that U.S. figure skating did that year, like after the season mm -hmm. um, in uh, Spokane. Um, and so like a lot of the cast had to go and do that competition. Um, so we had two weeks off. And so in that two weeks, I was like, Ashley, I have to come back um, because I didn't do it in the first, I didn't do it in the first two shows. Like I was just too, I was too afraid to do it and I didn't do it in the first two shows. So I went back um, and I went on the harness for another day um, and then I spent another day off the harness with her, just kind of like drilling it. And so by the time I went back for the, the second weekend of shows, I was like pretty confident in it. And so then I did it for the rest of the tour. But yeah, the first two shows, <laughs> I, I didn't do it because I was too afraid. Um, but from that point, um, you know, I, I, I did it on the floor every day. I did it on the ice every day. So there was like a good, there was a good like six or seven months that I did it every single day without fail because I was afraid that if I didn't, I would be too scared to do it. But then kind of after that point, I got so comfortable with it that now I, I don't even practice it. I just like, I just do it in the shows. Like I, <laughs> I, I don't practice it at home. I don't practice it in my run through. Um, unless I'm like, unless I'm doing like a show run through, you know, like there's still a little bit of that competitive aspect where you have to do like a full competitive run through. Um, and so I'll, yeah. I'll do it then, but um, it's it's kind of rare that I actually like work on it. That was, that was a great perspective. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I don't give short answers. <laughs> well, um, try to try to with this one. Deidre asks because um, I, I want to do a, a live episode um, with Laura. Um, I don't even want to try to pronounce her last name because I haven't really said it out loud. But Laura, who organized the Nepal trip. Oh, Kutlowski? Um, Kutlowski? Yes. I, Laura, if I mispronounce it, I apologize. <laughs> but. Um, you, you, you know, you see names online all the time, and you never really think about saying them out loud because you see them. But she's uh, an awesome graphic de designer and adult figure skater and figure skating, like, creator, because she's creating figures. Sh yeah. And... Uh, and, like content creator and you know like she does um she spent the last few years of her life like doing high alpine skating which is like i mean people have seen skating on lakes but she literally has like trekked to the highest lakes like in north america and uh, she wants to go to the highest lakes in the world and the highest lakes in south america like she wants to skate on the highest lakes that exist um so she's like creating an extreme sport out of outdoor skating it's really cool yeah uh, well, Deidre asked, will you talk about Nepal? But I think I want to save that for a future show. But if you have anything short you want to add about it, because um, you took that trip, was it in February, early, early February? February yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, it was unbelievable. I I could go on and on and on and on, but I, <laughs> I, will, I will keep it very brief. Um, it was one of the most unique and humbling things I've done. Um and the fact that I got to skate as part of it was so cool. But um, to even to kind of like take the skating, taking the skating aspect out of it, um, it was just such a special, it was, it, it's a very special place. It's a beautiful country. Um, I, I mean, I grew up in the mountains and I grew up in the Rockies in Colorado um, uh, in one of like the biggest skiing towns. Um, and so like, I thought I knew mountains and I thought like, you know, my, I'm, I'm like such a snob when it comes to, when it comes to skiing and when it comes to mountains and I'm like, I grew up with the best of the best. Like you can't compare. 
I kid you not, like, when we got into the Himalayas, I I thought I knew what mountains were. I had no idea. Like, these are mountains. Um, they just you they 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 just go on forever like you just look up and up and up and up and up and like they just keep going and it's it seems so surreal and um i didn't know anything like that really existed and you know i took so many pictures and we got a lot of footage but it, i just i go through it and nothing nothing does it justice like as beautiful as the pictures are as beautiful as the footage is it's just like it doesn't compare um and there was just something so special you know we had a four day trek up to the lake um and you know we hiked the whole thing um and it was like seven to eight miles or more a day um backpacking um we had uh yaks and 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 porters and um it was it was a whole it was a whole experience and it was so beautiful and it was so special and when we got to the lake it just it felt we all kind of had this collective feeling of like we earned it like we earned we earned the the privilege of skating in that space. Um, uh, and then it was really special because before they allowed us on the ice, like the locals, they performed a uh, puja, um, w- which is kind of like um, a ceremony to their gods to ask for permission and ask for safe permission um, for us to, to s- skate on the lake and, and to be, um, to be a part of nature in, in, in that way. And, um, that was really that was really special and really emotional and and to to kind of get to see that and and understand what skating on on that space meant and it wasn't just like you know an indoor rink it, it wasn't just like any lake like there it, it, there was something really um, magical about 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 that experience and and getting to skate um in that in that space in that environment um and and you know kind of being granted privilege in a sense um but yeah i don't know the, aside from that we were like at sixteen thousand feet so it was very 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 difficult <laughs> um but incredible incredible and it was absolutely incredible i would do it i would do it again in a heartbeat i was actually really nervous to go because i was like you know, thinking about the whole trek up and, and the altitude and, and um, not fully knowing what I was getting myself into. But um, after having done it, I would go back in a second. Awesome. Well, I hope I get to go with you <laughs> this time. <laughs> yeah, I for sure. In, I was in the UK uh, and I couldn't go to the, the expedition in December, but hopefully it's happening again. We'll have to ask her. Oh, uh, I was just part of like the most popular television show in the UK. <laughs> Just getting getting footage for <laughs> for Christopher Jean and Jane Torval and and choreographing <laughs> choreographing the camera blocking with them and like you know no no small thing no um, but Nepal's up there too I'm sure they would want to like go. <laughs> I have I, to convince I them know to this go. is like <laughs> your interview with me but I'm gonna ask you a question um, I don't know if you've actually talked about it at all like on your channel or, or like publicly but like what was your experience like choreographing the piece with Chris and Jane. Oh, I don't even know. If I, you're right. I haven't talked about it much. I think because it happened so close to the pandemic and everything shutting down, I wanted to save it for a happier time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, every single day I came in to block with them, I was just like, my eyes were wide open and I, like I would finish that every day like out of breath because I would just couldn't believe it was happening um mm-hmm. so a that's little so cool bit of background the final the finale the final skating performance of this season's Dancing on Ice in the UK um Jane and Chris did this they started off this gorgeous number and the idea behind it was that we start off with the camera right by their feet on perfectly clean ice and it was going to be done in one take and um which meant that if anything went wrong the camera a skater whatever we'd have to stop resurface the whole ice and wait like 30 minutes for it to dry and do it again and we were doing this before a show aired so it was a pre-taping um and it starts off with just their feet just their blades on the ice they carve these patterns into the fresh ice and then it kind of pans up and Christopher Dean like beckons to the camera like he's inviting the audience to join along with them and then 
we go through another half of the routine with them and then they invite the rest of the professional cast on and then they all jump into onto the ice and the whole thing was shot with just one camera one take and we did it on the first try but the the logistics behind all of that getting the camera to work reliably for the for three straight minutes and still perform it in front of a live audience so that they enjoyed it too and they were cheering and mm -hmm. applauding um the logistics of that were crazy but i was so lucky that they really just like kind of let me do my own camera blocking and then they started building the choreography around what we were capable of doing with the camera rig that i was wearing um that's like <laughs> It was a dream. <laughs> Not to say it, but like, you got to help choreograph a program for Jane Tarvel and Christopher Deed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from my That's from my true. point of view, like, just like camera. It, what was so great about it was that, like, you know, these are these are the people who have worked with, you know, the, the things that they've done in their career, right? Like, oh. with Yo Yo Ma and just tele no, it's television insane. Yeah, of all the you know they've had so many experiences, and for them to like say you know like they really appreciated it and they were thanking me for it i was just like are you kidding me like <laughs> this is nuts thanks for asking yeah no that's i thought when you told me that i thought that was so cool i was like that's such a i mean first like getting to work with them is such a dream because they're so incredible and the fact that they um you know they've been at it for so long and and they're still so good and they're so professional and they're still like so creative and and still um you know uh like kind of carving new spaces in skating and, and creating new avenues still. and um it's just like it's it, they are they're legends and and it's so cool that you got to do that thanks i mean they're legends and they're it's cool because they're living legends <laughs> you know they're still pushing the the skating world yeah um, with their show dancing on ice and other other things that that are in the works with them um and it's amazing like they perform in every single show yeah yeah like for those of us that <laughs> have never like i only kind of get to live vicariously through like friends that have been on the show like you and um other people but it, it's amazing to me the fact that they still they perform in every show like they skate together they do lifts they do mm -hmm. everything like it's that's that's a huge testament to them it's incredible yeah watching them skate even now i'm like i want to skate like them someday <laughs> yeah that's it's so cool i mean i want to skate like them someday <laughs> shoot um yeah i got to actually um I've only worked with Chris once. Uh, it was my first year senior. Um, he choreographed my short program and it was the hardest program I had ever done, but it was like, it was so intricate and it was so cool and I loved doing it. Um, but yeah, man, it was hard. That was actually another one I, I had, I scrapped unfortunately, but I, um, I did compete that one. I competed that one a good like four or five times. Uh, and then, I think I got rid of it right before sectionals and I went to my junior short program, but um, I'm yeah, I don't know. I'm I found video of that program like last year, I think for, and I had seen it for the first time and I was like, Holy, holy <laughs> cow. Like you did that? I did that. the stuff, like the stuff that he had me do, I was like, this is hard. <laughs> like, really, really hard. Watching him like teach. <laughs> watching him teach the celebrities like because every week they have like their one-on-one -on -one session with jane and chris and you know there's the weekly challenge so this week you have to do single jumps this week you have to do a one foot spin um mm. and then sometimes they get into the more intricate stuff like throw her over your shoulder and just watching him like <laughs> just throw her over your shoulder Someone oh come on you know skating just for like her. three months <laughs> But we this year we actually in our the same episode the season finale I I hope people outside of the UK get to watch this in some way shape or form but that last episode we had our first celebrity who started skating when the show started like when when training started he did a backflip mm -hmm. like a full unassisted backflip and Chris personally did the same thing like put the leather you know he and um one of the other coaches put the leather belt around him did it and it was perry um he's like an awesome 
hip hop dancer and has oh, okay. been part of like the huge British dance crew, but like still he can do backflips off the ice, but like doing him in skates with the toe pick, landing it like at the finale yeah. of the one and a half minute number was just insane. Yeah, so when I say that it's easier on the ice, I like that comes with nearly 30 years of skating like like <laughs> i'm comfortable i'm comfortable in skates like i'm comfortable skating i'm comfortable landing on like a teeny tiny blade um yeah it's easier on the floor because i have my feet to balance and then to help me but like i just meant like it's easy because of the momentum like i can't imagine just learning to skate and like not feeling <laughs> totally comfortable and confident in my ability to stand let alone do a backflip holy yeah. cow now that takes balls that was like yeah <laughs> me doing a backflip is not impressive that is impressive <laughs> wow i know i hope people can like find a way to watch that episode um i can't recommend ways but there are ways to watch shows in the uk outside of the uk <laughs> <laughs> um going through there are a few more I, I think um kaka says happy birthday jeremy from japan i watched your performance oh, on tv you. world champions world championships long program 2014 and i'm supporting you lots of happiness uh thank you hi <laughs> <laughs> oh alan and allison scott say happy birthday from home Smiley uh, face thank emoji. you love you mom and dad <sighs> um deidre says again at nationals is addictive <laughs> it is it is it um is. it's actually like for anyone who hasn't been to a u.s nationals like um, it's really funny when you talk to people who like coaches or spectators that have gone to kind of all sorts of competitions and national championships. And um, there's just a different energy. There's a different vibe to the U S championships. Like there's just this electricity that you don't find at other events. And it's so special. I love the U S championships. Like I always loved competing there. I have gone back now twice to watch two or three times. Um, and it's, it's fun to watch. Like it's just, it's a different animal. There's something really, really just special and unique about that one. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I tell myself how lucky I was to get to go to every nationals I tried to go to. I mean, as an yeah. ice dancer, it's the bar is a bit lower, but <laughs> <laughs> not in us. ice dancing. Come on now. Um, at the time I was skating, there were a couple times when there were only four teams coming out of sectionals. <laughs> Yeah, but, but how many teams were, like, getting by to Nationals, so, like... Yeah, yeah. Um, Amanda S. says, what What were your favorite Grand Prix events to do? She says she feels like everyone says NHK. Give me a second. Uh, I... I'm not sure how to answer this. Um, I really enjoyed um, Grand Prix of France, um, which I believe at the time was Bompard, uh, because I only got to do it once. <laughs> so in my whole career, I only did <laughs> France once. Um, I did everything else multiple times. Um, but so France was special just for that reason, because I only had the one opportunity. Um, Hated Skate America. Every year that I wanted to do it, I never got it. Every year I didn't want to do it was for the seasons I got it. <laughs> um, so that always kind of made me laugh. But uh, yeah, I never, never was a fan of Skate America. Just not because it was like not well run or um, not an enjoyable competition. Just it was personally not an enjoyable competition for me. Um, and then... Um, I don't know. They're all, I hate these questions of like, what's your favorite? Yeah. Cause they're all special. Yeah. Like they're all special in different ways. And, um, you know, uh, skate America is special because I get to be in front of a home crowd. Like even if I, I did love my competitive experience, it's always such a joy to compete in front mm -hmm. of a home crowd. And, um, I have good memories of skate Canada and skate Canada was my first ever grand prix. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, I won, the two times I competed at Cup of China, so I love China. <laughs> um, 
And, uh, you know, I only got to do France once. I have some really good memories of Russia. You know, I qualified for my first Grand Prix final in Russia. Um, actually, two of the three Grand Prix finals I qualified for in Russia. Um, and then Japan is just like Japan special and the audience is amazing. And um, I think one of my favorite things about uh, NHK is that it's in a different place. So every time I did it, I got to see a different city or a different town and, and experience um, a different part of Japan. So I really did enjoy that. Cool. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Favorites are tough. Um, Unseen Skaters says, happy birthday from Sylvia. Are there any differences when you choreograph for yourself versus others? Yes. Um, <laughs> first of all, hi, Sylvia, and thank you. Um, hope you're well. Uh, yeah, there is. Um, I think, I mean, the... The time constraints, number one, mm -hmm. because like when you're choreographing for someone else, you have limited time um, and, you know, it's it's very finite when you get to work with them and for how long. And a lot of times, you know, it's at their rink and they'll, they'll have their lessons and their coaching and their training. So you're like, OK, I get this hour for this many days. And um, so it's usually like a race against the clock, which is always a little hectic because especially like it, it kind of becomes a puzzle with especially with competitive programs because you have to fit it in certain elements and you know how can I do that and make it musical and how can I do that and keep the um the integrity of of the movement and the program and the choreography that we've been doing and um you know I find a lot of times like I'll start out just kind of doing choreography and getting into the program and then we'll get about halfway through and we'll have done like three elements. I'm like, uh, we got to go back and like <laughs> rework this a little bit. Um, so it's, it's just kind of a struggle to figure out how to put everything, like all of the pieces of the puzzle in the right places to make it fit seamlessly and cohesively, as well as be enjoyable to watch and entertaining and, and keep the integrity of what, what the purpose of the program was. Um, but yeah, I don't know. With myself, like, I get to basically choreograph all year long. Because, um, like, with my competitive stuff, I would I would make my program and um, I would take as much time as I needed. Uh, so I think, you know, Exogenesis in 2012, it took me two months, like, from the time I started working on it to the time I finished it. Um, but then I was tweaking it all year long. And then by the time I did it in 2014, like there were even more changes that we made. And um, so it's kind of like when I choreograph for myself, it's always a living, breathing being um, where I get to adjust and change things that I don't love. Um, and when I choreograph for somebody else, you know, like it's rare that you get the opportunity to see them on a regular basis to really kind of help them evolve and grow the, the program as they go and as they develop their um, their stamina and their technique and everything else. Um, so I, I, there is definitely that, that difference. <laughs> yeah. But you do choreograph a lot. So I'd imagine even in those short periods of time, if you can choreograph and then come back throughout the season um, and help that skater kind of grow, I'm sure you're the kind of person who can see someone when they show up and see where they're going to be in the next few months, because you know, how that choreographic process works for yourself too. Yeah. Um, you know, when I leave, when I set, when I set a piece for somebody and then leave, I'm like insistent that we get to do touch-ups, um, which I don't always get to do. And I find unfortunate when I don't, because I know that programs have to change, especially like, you know, when you go into the beginning of the season, you're, you're putting out your best case scenario, your plan A, which is like, I have all of my most difficult tricks and I'm in the best shape and I'm prepared and I'm going to be doing, like, I have a new element um, that I'm going to be performing. And like, that's like, okay. And a new combination. And like, we're, we're making the plan for the hardest possible program that you can have. Um, and now sometimes that's going to have to change and that's going to have to adjust. And like, sometimes when you have a new element, then you kind of have to adjust something on the back side, on the back end. Um, and so, you know, I really like, I try to, emphasize and, and request that we we do touch-ups because i know that things have to change um and 
uh, I'd rather I'd rather put in the work with the student and with the coach together to to create a program that is going to be the most successful for that for that kid or or for the student for whatever their goals are. Um, I, I hate when I when I see a when I haven't seen a program all season and I, I see it at, at like um, you know sectionals or nationals for the first time and it's everything's been changed all of the choreography, um, the steps, the jumps, um, because I, I know that that's the case, um, but all of the all of the integrity is lost. Mm-hmm. Um, you know none of the none of the intent of the programs there anymore and now it's just become where it, it became like a labor of love and, and something that I was working on with, with that student. Um, it's just become, you know, checking boxes, which ultimately, you know, in competition, you kind of, you have to check those boxes, but, um, when, when the program just looks as if you're just checking boxes, then, well, at that point, like, why did you hire, why did you hire a choreographer? Um, especially when I offered to come back, um, and, and kind of do whatever it takes to make sure that, that the program is the best it can be. Um, you know, I, I, I feel guilt when I see that, I just feel guilty because I feel like they wasted their money. Um, I feel like the parents and the student, you know, their, their money could have been better spent if, if it was just going to end up being a check the box situation. You know, they didn't need to hire a choreographer. They didn't need to hire me. They like, they could have just had an element list and had like <laughs> their friend choreograph it for free, you know? Um, so I, 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 if, if I have anybody out there listening, like <laughs> do touch ups, bring your choreographer back in, bring me back in if I'm your choreographer. Um, because the, I, I, I don't, I don't choreograph because I just like, love it like I do I love it but um I do it because I really like getting to work with the athletes and and to kind of grow their perspective on skating and give them a little bit of a nugget to like to grow from and to to um to work with and you know I I like kind of having the ability to make a small change in their career and make a small change in their opinion or their idea on music or the idea of how they skate or why they skate or what they skate for or what the purpose of skating is to them. Like I like, I like helping those, those athletes kind of find, find their purpose and find their voice. Um, For me, that's my favorite part. That's why I like doing it. So when I've worked with somebody to kind of try to find or try to start to grow their voice or try to start to find their voice or try to start to give them some perspective. Um, and, and then it's like all just kind of shut down pretty quickly. Um, that's, that's where I get frustrated because like, you know, not every program is going to be a winner. Not every program is going to be perfect. It's not going to be the best of the best every time, but, um, you know, I, I try to be strategic about every program that I choreograph and every student that I work with to try to help them, to try to help them grow, you know, I don't, not everyone's going to be an Olympic champion or a national champion, but I want people walking away from, from their, from their competition, from their season, from their career, feeling ownership over what they did and, and feeling ownership over their, their music choices and, and, and their, their movement choices and, and their, their own experience in the sport and their own experience kind of with, with art and movement and all of that. Um, you know, I want them to to feel gratified about the work that they put in, and and not just solely about numbers and um, and placement, mm-hmm. uh, because for many, like, it's not going to be the it's not going to be exactly what you want. It's not. It's you know, it's not going to be um, for televised for everyone and not everyone gets to compete internationally and compete at the Olympics and compete at worlds and or even compete at nationals. And it's like, at the end of the day, I want you to feel proud of your career and feel proud of what you did. And, and I like giving that to people and I like helping them discover that. And so, um, that's, that's why I love to choreograph. (laughs) 
I feel like yeah. I kind of went down one path and came back, but did yeah. I, I tied it all together. So I tied it all together somehow. I think it speaks, it definitely speaks to who you are and why you do what you do, why you put yourself out there as a choreographer, even as a performer, as a skater. Um, you believe in what skating means to you and you want to share that as you believe that it's more than just doing a routine for a competitive score. It's, it's way more than that. It's the meaning of it all. And, I think people appreciate that and people know yeah. it when they see you skate and that's why you're <laughs> so sought yeah. after. <laughs> well, and I mean, these kids, like, they, you know, obviously as a competitive ice dancer, like they sacrifice a huge amount of their time and their lives. And, and, um, you know, uh, especially during that age, like most kids are kind of building like people outside of the rink, you know, like they, they, they're in school full time and, and, they're building those bonds and they're starting to think about careers and like, we're just like very focused on skating. And, um, so when that's like what your main focus is and that's what you're sacrificing a lot of your time, um, and energy to do, like you want to leave with a good, when, when you leave or when you decide to leave, like you want to do that with a sense of, of pride and a sense of calm and a sense of gratitude and not, um, you know, not, a sense of you don't want to have this feeling of like anger or resentment when you leave. And I, I've had a lot of friends leave the sport with a lot of resentment. Um, and so the people I work with, I want to make sure that that's not the case. I don't want them to have any, any anger or, or, or resentment towards what they went through because it, it's a lot of sacrifice and it's a lot of work and it's a lot of your formative years put into kind of a thankless sport. <laughs> um, so I just, mm-hmm. I don't know. I want people to, I want people to love skating. I want them to love what they do. I want them to, to one day when they decide that they're going to hang up the skates to just feel a sense of joy and pride in, in the work that they did and, and, and what, what they gained from skating and not just, not just remember the the numbers and the placements and the results, but remember the feeling of why they loved it and, and, and what brought them to the ice and, and, and kind of keep them feeling that way until, until they're done. Agreed. <laughs> um, I think we're we're almost done with time. Plus, it's your birthday, so we gotta let you go and enjoy your day. <laughs> I have a full day of sitting around the house. Don't worry about it. Um, no, I just uh, thank you for having me. It was it was really fun, and um, I'm glad we guys got to relive some of these moments. And um, yeah, I, I there was a lot of footage that I haven't seen, so that was really cool. Um, but hopefully everyone watching uh enjoyed it and got something from it and um you know anyway um yeah i found out this morning that today would have been brianna taylor's birthday so happy birthday to brianna taylor um rest in peace but um yeah so there's some work to be done today uh outside of this but (laughs) well that's that uh, i want to thank uh Thank you, of course, for sharing this day with us and thank everybody who shared it as well, who watched, who tuned in, whether you watched the whole thing or just a bit at the beginning or even now, um, really appreciate it. And thank you for helping to give skaters a platform um, to talk and communicate and connect in this time when we're all still so isolated and, you know, we're so used to traveling and seeing each other in these faraway cities um now we get to meet online well, yeah thank you for thank you for creating that platform thank you for innovating um a new way for skating to be seen and for for fans to um to follow along and and, and get a new a new on ice perspective yeah. Hey! <laughs> yes. um, um, and i i have to end with thanking to my patreons um patreon.com slash on ice perspectives is the way that people have been supporting what I do and why I do it uh, this whole time when I'm in self-isolation here in New York City. So, um, yeah. yeah, thank you well, all. Thank you guys for giving Jordan a platform to give us a platform. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it really is a, a sense of community that, um, you know, I think as a, as a competitive skater, leaving the competitive skating world and seeing the, the fans, um, the fans of skating as this greater community that's bigger than even the competitive community um you understand like there was always this 
there was always this uh, force of support that helped keep the skating world running because they're the ones who show up to competitions they show up to the meet and greets they yeah. you know and they know we <laughs> we have some of the best fans and very grateful for for all of you guys and um i personally have some amazing fans thank you love you guys <laughs> um but skating fans in general like you guys are a community and you create a community and and um you know you give you give us a voice and a platform and and um, a place to express ourselves and we're grateful for that. And, um, yeah, I'm grateful to all of you for helping Jordan with this platform and Jordan grateful for you for innovating, um, a new, a new avenue for skating and, and, and creating, um, a new space and a new platform and a new community, uh, within the broader sense of the skating world. Oh, thank you for being there since the beginning, honestly. <laughs> like the very thank beginning. Thank you for <laughs> thank you for having me. Um and it's been fun. Yeah, well happy birthday, Jeremy. Enjoy the rest of your day. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you for the next episode. Yeah. Bye guys, thanks for joining. Bye.